A shield bidding sports card influencer has decided to make a comeback as a pseudo hobby watchdog and I think this whole thing is pretty hilarious. It's certainly not something that I had on my 2024 bingo card, but I want to talk about it today, number one, to highlight the hypocrisy of some of the things this guy is saying, but also use this as a leaping point to, to re-clarify to you guys that you need to be a bit careful where the information that you're consuming is coming from because we have countless examples of people in this hobby, and I will name and shame a couple of them in this video, that have done some very scammy things in the past that are now sort of at the forefront and are basically being rewarded for their efforts. And then also maybe tap into why you also need to be careful where you're consuming information when it comes to sponsored content creators, because guys are out there basically being paid for by these companies, being company men, not giving you guys, you know, the transparent and honest information that you should be deserving. And I'll kick things off like you saw in the thumbnail, talking about Mr. Shea Vlogs or Mr. Shea Vlogs as he's now referred to as because he was somebody that was quite prominent from an influencer perspective in this hobby. And then about a year ago, maybe a little bit less, um, got caught shill bidding on his own cards. And then he sort of went on this weird, you know, not tirade, but social media push to try and say what he was doing was justified um, because he basically said, why am I, you know, shill bidding if I'm bidding on my own card and I'm going to pay? But the sort of idiot doesn't realize that, you know, you're shield bidding on a card. And if you do, in fact, win, you only have to pay the commission to the consigner, right? Or, you know, if you don't win, you've basically pushed a price up for somebody else that would otherwise have paid a heck of a lot less for that card. So it's a pretty clear shield bidding, obviously, and also pretty hilarious, like I said, that he sort of went out there trying to justify his behavior. And I think he went on the likes of Jeremy Lee's show and, and tried to justify it. He basically got grilled, torn to shreds, and then decided to disappear and rightfully so. I can't recall if I mentioned as well, but he was tied to the likes of Topps. So you think he was in some of their commercials, some of their ads, and tied to a few other companies. They all basically cut ties with him, as you sort of expect in a situation like that, where you've got somebody coming out and not only having accusations around shield bidding, but coming out and confirming and saying what he did was wrong, which is, you know, pretty hilarious in my opinion. But what, what was also pretty funny about this before I get into the detail of today's story is the likes of Prism God coming out and supporting it, which is another clear cut example of people in this space at the forefront, maybe not being across the ethics or the common sense that you would expect of them and should maybe, maybe have you starting to ask a lot more tougher questions. But basically what Prism God said at the time, and I recorded this nine months ago, firstly, look how much skinnier I was, which is pretty embarrassing, but that's what dad life does to you. But what Prism God basically came out and said was he caught up on the situation um, and then basically said, you can't, what you're saying, you can't bid on your own card if you own it, whether you're the owner or not, that doesn't make sense. He goes on to say something around, um, you know, but that happens whether it's your card or not. If you love the card more than me, pay for it, which is pretty hilarious to have somebody come out and try and justify and substantiate, you know, that kind of unethical shield bidding behavior, which is actually illegal in the heck of a lot of places, you know, around the world. But keep this in mind when we're talking through the talking points today. But like I sort of alluded to, he's sort of come back, Shay has come back and started talking about this whole CT scanning situation and why, you know, it's bad for the hobby, it's no good, we need to get rid of it because it's creating an unfair market, people are getting ripped off, this is unacceptable, which I found a bit rich to be coming from this guy, to be perfectly honest, for the reasons that I just mentioned. And he's coming out here and talking about this sort of stuff, completely, you know, forgetting about all the shooting that he did. And, you know, maybe he's going to come out and say he only should be on one card, but who's to say he didn't do a heck of, a heck of a lot more than that? And, you know, the fact that he sort of came out so strong and robust with wanting to defend it and saying it was perfectly fine and being confused why people were pushing back, it tells me that, you know, he was probably doing this a heck of a lot longer than what he sort of got caught for. And to give you a bit more context, Fun Your Cards was a company that he was, you know, a co-founder of. They're still around. He got kicked out of that once this stuff all happened. But like I said, it's a bit you know, rich coming from him. You're a shill bidder and have confirmed accusations. You came out and confirmed that you in fact did this sort of stuff. And, and now you want to get on a high horse and talk about what is good or bad for the hobby. Like, yes, people deserve second chances, but it's a bit hilarious in my opinion. And I want to hear what you guys have to say down below. In his, you know, post from 10 hours ago, he said something like this. He can't sleep over this news. This new tech affects the entire hobby ecosystem. Where's the community need to figure out some sort of solution? The quicker, the better, in my opinion. Again, where does your you know ethics start and stop? Where does your conscience start and stop? Why all of a sudden are you, you know, trying to be a defender of the hobby when you sort of probably did one of the worst things you could do in this space? Again, three hours ago, it's 4.30 in the morning his time. He's talking about this half naked again. It's like, mate, put a shirt on firstly. <laughs> and secondly, like, again, get off your high horse. And I don't want to be one of these people that are yelling from my lawn and saying, I'm the only guy that can talk about bad stuff within this space. But 
this is sort of right up there with the crap you usually see. And it's just a bit hilarious how people can try and make the hobby think they have a short memory. Like, again, I'm all for people having a second chance, but this just seems a bit a bit weird to me. And I want to get your guys' thoughts down below because this is not new. We've seen this before. The likes of Slab Stocks did almost exactly the same thing. Years ago, I think around 2019, they had a, a pix list that they were selling to people and what they were doing at the same sort of time and not disclosing this was some of the cards in their list of what to buy in terms of what was also trending were cards they actually owned and they were actually selling these things under their mum's eBay account. And they got caught, did an apology video, got grilled for their apology video, took the apology video down and then spent the preceding national trying to save face. And this is all documented on a blowout thread. But again, people that sort of did unethical things that are now propped up by the hobby. Again, individuals that are sponsored by Tops and the like, and are now, you know, huge in the space. They're one of the biggest, you know, companies and, and influencers within the space. So again, pretty hilarious how the hobby just has a track record of, you know, people doing unethical things that are still being rewarded and still at the forefront of this industry. And it's just hilarious how people can just come out and, and pretend that nothing is wrong. And then, you know, people don't sit back and ask questions. And again, I don't want to sit here and, and make out like I'm the only person that can talk about bad things within the hobby or sports car radio is the only ones that can talk about it. AIH sports, etc. My whole point is just be very conscious of where this information is coming from. Have a, have a longer memory. Think about these things and start holding these people more accountable. Start asking the question around why they weren't pushing back for certain things in the past or why is their tune change changed all of a sudden? Like this guy, shill bitted, right? He shill bit on things and he's sitting there talking about what this CT scanning technology can do to the hobby. But the question should be, well, do you feel as bad for the people that you, you know, shill bid cards on, but then didn't win and they had to pay more because of you? Are you going to go ahead and try and reimburse them? Do you feel bad about that? Is that is that keeping you up at night? Or is this whole CT scan machine thing keeping you up at night because you're trying to use this to sort of weasel your way back into the forefront of the industry, into the hobby? Like, again, the hobby's welcome for everyone, but, you know, don't try and pr pretend to be somebody that you're not, isn't what I'm trying to sort of say here. And, just remember where the information is coming from because there's a lot of guys these days, like I said, and I've said many times that are now talking about this bad stuff. And I think that's super fantastic because we as a community sort of need to be holding these companies and these individuals a heck of a lot more accountable than what they have been in the past. So the more people talking about it means we can place more pressure on them to try and get more meaningful change for us as you know participants in this hobby, as consumers, as collectors, whatever you want to refer to yourself as. But you know, it has to have some reason and you got to be careful where the people that are talking about it now weren't talking about it before and why weren't they talking about it before? That's the question you need to ask. And if they are talking about it now, how, you know, truthful about it are they? How much of the information are they hiding? Are they sponsored by a company? If they are sponsored by a company, does that mean they're not going to give you the full information? And I think all that sort of stuff needs to be answered again when you're sort of hearing this information. Again, listen to everyone like I always say. I don't say just listen to me or the other guys that I mentioned a bit earlier. Take the information from everywhere, but just be smart about, you know, what it is you're hearing because guys like Shay want you to forget about their past. And yes, people deserve second chances. I'm going to keep saying that. They want you to forget about their past. Like in my opinion, lean into it, own it, you know, acknowledge it. Don't don't come out and all of a sudden talk about this sort of stuff and then pretend like this stuff didn't happen. Like own own your past. People make mistakes. People make, you know, fuck ups. It's okay. It's okay. It's how you grow. It's how you grow. It's how you get better, et cetera. So let me know your thoughts down below. I just thought this was, you know, a pretty interesting one and I'm keen to see if anyone else feels the same way, to be perfectly honest. So just keep this sort of stuff in mind. Like I said, this was a, a random ass video today. I just thought this was pretty interesting to see this guy pop up back all of a sudden being a hobby hero when he in fact is a hobby zero. And the next thing on my bingo list is going to be sports card therapists coming back and trying to do the same thing because it just doesn't make sense. And, and clearly people um, think the hobby is dumb they think you guys are idiots and they want to take advantage of you because they want to get back to ripping you off so you know share your thoughts down below and i'll see you guys in the next one cheers